I'm Jean Gray, publisher of American Entrepreneurship Today and host of the podcast series, Experience Voices, where I talk with highly accomplished people who share the critical elements that led to their success. Our topic today on Experience Voices is the excitement of retail innovation. Our guests will discuss the latest technology impacting the retail industry and the annual Retail Big Show, where innovation is showcased to over 40,000 attendees. My two guests are Susan Newman, Senior Vice President of Events at the National Retail Federation, and Rob Grimes, Founder and CEO of the International Food and Beverage Technology Association. This year, the Big Show has a food service innovation zone dedicated to 50 exhibitors showcasing innovation in food service. The zone will have immersive applications for attendees to experience innovation as it exists in an actual retail environment. Welcome to Experience Voices, Susan and Rob. Susan, let's start by describing what makes up the retail industry and what the annual Retail Big Show is all about. Thank you, Jean. It's great to be here. The retail industry impacts millions of consumers every day. I think that's the piece that we need to keep in mind. It is the nation's largest private sector employer and contributes more than $3.9 trillion to the nation's gross domestic product. So we represent a, an enormous industry. With that, we put on Retail's Big Show, where more than 40,000 retail professionals come to New York to see what the future of retail looks like. So what I think of retail, I think of department stores. I think of the local mom and pop shop. And now with what our conversation is covering, I think about restaurants and we're gonna learn about food service distribution. So that's all part of retail, right? That is all part of retail. And what's interesting about the industry now, it's not only the kinds of stores, but it's how people are shopping, right? So they're shopping now bricks and mortar, they're shopping on their phones, they're shopping in store. The industry is changing every day. So it's not only where, but how. And that's what we talk about at the show. And the NRF, the National Retail Federation, you represent, right? Yes. And are, there's, it's membership based and does it bring in all those different segments? It does, it is membership based, it's company membership based. And we represent small, medium, and large size retailers. So from the mom and pops on Main Street all the way to the Amazons and the Walmarts of the world. So what's bringing us here today is the inaugural Food Service Innovation Zone, which is going to be a section within the Retail Big Show. So tell me a little bit about the zone. So... I, I will give you an overview, and I'm sure Rob will want to dive in a little bit deeper. But on the surface, the Food Service Innovation Zone is an area that focuses on the future of food service. Consumer expectations are changing every day, and the food service sector must change as well. Consumers want fresher, more convenient food wherever they are. Yeah, hey, you know, let me let me go ahead and just sort of add to that. So the International Food and Beverage Technology Association, which I represent, supports food and beverage across all the different industry segments from retail to hotel to restaurants. And there's lots of segments. This is actually our fourth time doing something at the NRF Big Show. So we started with a conference for two years, and then we actually have had an innovation area for the last two shows. But this is the first time that we are actually moving into our own space and really doing this a big way. I want to just add to what Susan had said earlier about the NRF's presence in the food and beverage industries or the food service industries. You know, retail, so in my world, I call them operators, but I get it that they're retailers, you know, certainly in the retail world. But the interesting thing about it is I've been going to the NRF Big Show for many, many years. I bet it's been over 20 years. And the reason why is because it is the one technology event in the industry that showcases all technology versus the ones that are specialized for the restaurant industry or, or other segments of retail where you don't have all the big players there. 
And so what I've seen over the years is that large and small players in food service attend this show. However, there was never a focus specifically on the food service. It usually was embedded in somebody else's booth that might have food service products. And there are so many food service operators from traditional food service like the restaurants to the independents and the small to medium businesses. But you find food service, if I were to define it, not as food retail or food distribution that might be more for grocery store or deli, but more of convenience stores, vending, uh, on-site segment, which is your stadiums and arenas and business food service. Obviously, all the segments of restaurants that are out there, robotics. And so when you start taking a look at that, those industries fit all the way across retail. And that's why it's so important to be at the retail big show. And this year you have 50 exhibitors in this section that you are dedicating to food service innovation, correct? Yeah, go ahead, Susan. Well, I was just going to say 50 individual companies, but we also have companies represented within all of the activations. And then the number of products increases from there based on what each company is showcasing. And, and, so on, top of, and on top of that, Susan's exactly right. There are a lot more products being shown than there may in fact be booths that are there because you have multiple uh, vendors that work together. However, I tour the whole show because throughout the rest of NRF, in their innovation theaters and, and in their innovation area and in the main halls, uh, in the other halls that are there, there is also food service technology that is more general because we need to remember that while there may be industry-specific food service technology, technologies that are offered by people like Microsoft and Zebra and Salesforce and SAP and all of these other ones also work within the industry, but they also work in other industries. So there's a lot more food service technology at the NRF Big Show than there is just in this zone. Well, one could definitely understand all the broadness of the show, given that you're bringing in 40,000 attendees. So. Let's talk a little bit about the immersive activations that are going to be found in the zone. Who who would best, Rob or Susan, to tell me about the activations? Susan, good start. Well, so yeah, I'll do a highlight, and then I'm sure Rob can dive in a little bit more into the technology. So the immersive activations are areas where numerous partners come together to help show the customer what the experience is as they come together, right? So no technology functions independently in reality. It takes a number of technologies to tell a full story, and that's what we're showcasing in the innovation zone, how they come together and how amazing the technology is when they do. So if I'm attending and I'm in the zone, am I then experiencing these technologies as if I was going to be in the immersive, actual Immersive sport? and experiential is probably more the right word. The challenge that you have sometimes with technology is that you can explain it, but until you actually can touch and feel and see it, you don't really know how it works and what does it mean to me? Because you don't care about the rest of them. You care, how do I use it? What's my opportunity? So the whole idea of the activations is to actually show real life cases, not just to what exists today, but also what is coming, because not all of it is today's technology. Some of it is the next year's and the next couple of years technology. And so if you come into that room and you say, hey, listen, I, I work in an airport and we know the airports are shifting to grab and go or they have C stores, convenience stores, which are very close. You can actually see it real life and walk through it, do a transaction. If you say, I want to add a drive through, which most people think drive through quick service. Hey, how about drive through at Wawa or Sheets or, you know, I mean, there are drive throughs everywhere. CVS has drive throughs you know, in the pharmaceutical. So you actually can see how a drive through works. What's the menu boards? How does it work? Oh, I need to put a restaurant in my big box department store. You can see how that works. And it's not just that. I should just point out that it's not just that, but you also probably have a preconceived notion. Oh, if I want to put this in, it's going to be a lot of trouble and I'm going to have to put in, you know, uh, hoods and fire suppression, and all this. Well, actually we're showcasing technology in a room that doesn't have that. And so you actually can touch and feel real life how it works, including vending, by the way. I shouldn't, shouldn't forget that one, too. So my understanding is that for a lot of these innovations, they're being deployed because partnerships have formed from multiple vendors in order to deliver the innovation. So could you give me an example 
of where a partnership was formed and it's going to change the customer experience? Yeah, I think that there's two ways to look at this. One is the partnerships that are formed on the vendor. So for instance, you'll have technology vendors in the hardware side because hardware cannot exist without software. And by the way, it can't exist without services either. So you can take a company like Samsung, you know, who is there and they have screens, but they also make kiosks and we all know they make mobile devices. Well, if you want to use them within the retail environment or food service, you have to have software that runs on it to take those orders at a kiosk or to do what they call line busting with a phone. Menu boards are the same way. It's not just digital signage. It's, it's the same thing. And then you also have, you know, people that are layering on voice AI to do translation. So we know that travelers are international and actually our employees are international. So we have to be able to deliver and make it understandable you know, where it is with translation. So those are the types of partnerships. But I would point out there's one other partnership that's extremely important here, which is the partnerships that actually occur between the retailers and the operators. You know, the pizza jukebox that's going to be shown at the center of the plate of this room is actually being deployed in Walmart with a group called Bricks Holdings, which owns pizza jukebox, but they also own a pizza brand and they own Friendly's ice cream. That is a partnership that occurs between operators and retailers, using both terms. And so, you know, we see a lot of that too when you see a, a convenience store that has a restaurant in it. And so that's the other kind of partnership that we're able to see. With the zone becoming being set up as a, as a dedicated space for food service innovation, how would you say innovation in retail is occurring? Are we still in a very early stage and a lot more excitement is to come? Or are we in the infancy and we don't really know where these partnerships are going? So I don't know that we can look at that from just the food service perspective. I think as retail as a whole, I continue to think we're at the infancy stage. Every time we think that we've innovated as far as we possibly can, I mean, it just when RFID was the thing and then the QR code was the thing and then web point two or web point three, and now we have AI, I think beyond our comprehension, this industry just keeps innovating and evolving and will continue to do so. So I just think we stay in the infancy stage and that's what the show is about. Every year, we get a chance to showcase all the new technologies and how consumers are using it. And that's what makes this show so amazing. And ha that's why it's growing year uh, after year. So, I know, so I'm I'm not, I know I'm not the moderator. I'm not supposed to ask a question. But Susan, you might want to talk about the uh, innovation area that you have at the show, because I go there to look and see what's next generation is coming. Thank you, Rob. That was a very nice plug. So we do have the what we call an innovation lab, where we bring, again, about 50 companies who are curated based on um, criteria that their technology is new, is future forward, is changing retail as we know it today. And they've actually, the companies from the lab over the years have gone on to become companies that we know today that are changing retail, but it's a fantastic representation of the future of retail. So really there are two areas if I'm attending the show, I should be going to the food service innovation zone, and then I should be going to the innovation lab. Jean, thank you for asking. We also have a startup hub where we have brand new, not even yet available technologies just on the cusp of becoming mainstream, hopefully. And so that's another area. But to be honest, we have more than 300,000 square feet of technology that if someone is looking to enhance, improve, and future protect their business, they need to see what's on the floor. Well, that's great. So let's focus a little bit on the customer experience. Define it. I, I'm walking into a store or I'm putting my hand on a shelf or I'm ordering something. So when you guys throw around customer experience, what are you talking about? So I'll say from from NRF's perspective, representing a wide breadth of retailers of all kinds, the customer experience, it, it can't be defined as any, as any one thing. It really is about trying to meet the customer where they are based on the expectations they have 
And there's, as you can imagine, a super huge wide realm of what that could possibly mean. So depending on the type of retailer or the type of food service and the audience that is loyal to them, their customer service could mean something very different than someone else's. So if you were to capture the excitement of the big show, how would you describe it for an attendee? I would describe Retail's Big Show as the place that any retailer or food service provider who wants to see what the future of retail looks like needs to come to the show to to see all of the technology and to hear about what the trends are and what the expectations of the consumer is. Like it is the place to see how to propel your business into the future. Great. So one other question I think I can pose to you as far as what do you feel would be, now this is from your perspective, because Rob may have a slightly different one or somewhat different one, is what do you think is the one innovation that you feel is exciting for the future that would be showcased there? Yeah, I think the hot topic at at the show this year is, I think it's the most controversial. I think it's the hottest topic is AI, the use of AI, how it's changing the consumer experience, how it's affecting the retailers themselves, right? I think there's a, a positive aspect to it. I think there's a scary aspect to it. I think all of that's going to be discussed and highlighted at the show. So I definitely think that's the, the big the big topic this year. So. Let's focus a little bit on the fact that partnerships are forming to make all of these innovations happen. So how would you describe or give examples of what a good partnership is and how it's formed? Right. Well, there's really two types of partnerships. There's the kind that occur between the technology vendors themselves. And generally, when I look at technology, it's hardware, software, and services. So There are hardware-only companies that need the software applications to run, but they go across multiple industries. So screens are one of those, kiosks is another, sometimes point-of-sale terminals are. And so they need the software to run. You also have the combination of partnerships, for instance, like if you're getting into the new vending areas and you want to take payments or go cashless, you have to have an integration between the payment processors and possibly screens, by the way, as well on, on it and contactless payments. So there's a number of partnerships that occur. Because you make menu boards doesn't mean that you can actually display the menu. And then it has to get to the point of sale to take the order. And then you may have a pickup piece. So you can start to see how, and by the way, none of this works if you don't have great access and secured access because you're taking credit card and payment transactions. So these are partnerships between vendors and no one can operate solely on their own. But then you have the partnerships as well between the operators and the retailers. And that's where you see the Walmarts, you know, are putting in, they used to put in McDonald's and the Walmarts are putting in the pizza jukebox, which is actually at the center of the plate here, which is a combination of a pizza company that's under Bricks Holdings, which is They're the guys that own Friendly's ice cream and putting it in Walmart with robotics. And you start to see vending machines that have brand names on them. And you start to see convenience stores that have branded products in them or they have a restaurant in them. So we see partnerships as well, not only between vendors, but also between operators and retailers. So when you're thinking of a Walmart or even a a major department store, are the people within these companies seeking out the innovators, are they under, to a certain extent, are incentivized or under pressure to stay abreast of all the things that are going on? Sometimes people don't know about the opportunities that exist, which is part of why the NRF wants to show people the opportunity of bringing food service into their operations, because they may not realize they can do it. Sometimes it happens because of circumstances beyond our control or force majeure, perhaps. So you have COVID that happens, that shuts down operations, and all of a sudden you have to sell other things. That's why restaurants who got shut down started selling groceries. And so, you know, you start seeing those kinds of combinations as well that force it. But there are other things at play. For instance, electrification 
and EV charging stations are going to change the way the gas station convenience store industry works because they may not be doing gas in the future and therefore they need to do something in the space or while somebody is charging up their vehicle. And so sometimes those things happen as well that, that create the innovation of the future, get you to look outside. Nobody ever thought that you could do fresh food in vending machines. And I'm not just talking about salad in a jar. I'm talking about actually making a fresh pizza from scratch or hot dogs or burgers. Now you can. And so you may not have thought about that, but the innovation has gotten such that you can do it. And that's what creates the innovation. That's what they're looking to showcase to get people thinking. So when I attend the big show, you're telling me that I'm going to be able to see a pizza being made by a robot? Yep. You're going to see and experience it, but you're actually going to see it in a real life brand that is actually, you could put it into your retail store today, but the robots, in this case, it's called Pizza Jukebox. That's actually a brand name and it's exactly what it is. In other words, it can be customer facing. It's all made inside of a box and then served versus robotics that make pizzas behind the scenes that you might do if you're a stadium or an arena where you wanna do mass pizzas, but you're not putting it in front of the customer. This one's actually meant to be in front of the customer. How would you describe the arc of innovation in retail at this point? Do you think we're only at the infancy or we've kind of started to get our legs and and gain some momentum? Yeah, so I heard what Susan had to say about that. And it's very interesting because your perspective comes from whichever industry you're in. So a lot of times food service people used to say, you know, restaurant people, let's say restaurants, would say that they're behind the retail industry. Well, why is that? Because if you have a grocery store or a retail store that has, you know, 25 or 50 terminals, that's a lot more than the two or three you might have in a restaurant. And therefore, people are creating innovation there. If you look at uh, scanning, and I know Susan talked about uh, QR codes and scanning, you know, those types of things started in retail. However, they're adapted to be in the other ones. But when it comes to uh, contactless payment and handheld terminals, those probably came from the restaurant industry. So I never look at one particular industry. And by the way, I never look at one geography either because great online ordering and delivery actually started in Asia and in India, and then it came to the US. So um, sometimes you have to know where to look. So I'm not going to tell you that retail is behind food service, food service is behind. I think it depends where the need is. And, and just as an example, by the way, if you're looking at innovation, many years ago, people said people always in the restaurant industry or the hotel industry have to talk to a person. It's the hospitality industry. They'll never not do that. Well, Airline industry goes to kiosks. They start doing self-ordering. People want convenience. When people want convenience, perhaps they're willing to get rid of some of the service or they want better cost. And so they will actually work with something. And that's before you even get into things like AI. Is there a particular technology that right now is rippling through the industry? Because we talked or mentioned the fact that AI is is the buzzword, but AI still has has its has has a way to go before it's it's going to ripple through everything. So is there was payment processing at some point the, innov payment, the innovation? Payment processing is old. I would tell you that there's probably three things that you know are the subject of conversation because the IFPTA actually has chapters and we have these kinds of conversations all the time. Artificial intelligence is a buzzword. It is out there. I see it as a resurgence of rules-based you know, processing that we used to do. But, but the artificial intelligence is also out there because it's getting people scared. They see the Screen Actors Guild concerned about you know, deep fakes. And, and those are interesting things. But to me, if you look at them positively, there's a great future in that if we can get control on some of the governance and data security pieces. So AI is certainly one of the big ones. The other one is going to be handheld terminals. And why? Because all of a sudden we have consumer terminals on the cell phone that can be used within industry. So companies like Samsung take their phone and they say, hey, why not use that as a waiter terminal? Or why not use that for line busting in a retail store for price checking? So, and that is actually a cash register, it's just self-service. 
and so online ordering obviously is one of the big areas, but what is online ordering? What's a kiosk? Because a kiosk can be on your cell phone or it can be on something that looks like a kiosk or it can be table side in a restaurant with games and things on it. So we have artificial intelligence, we have handheld terminals. And then if we think about it, probably the other big one is gonna be robotics, but not the robotics of the drones. That was a nice flash in the pan thing and everybody's showing, oh, let me deliver a pizza by drone. I think robotics is going to be more, right now it's for assistance. So if you go in a United Club lounge in the air, might see a robot as an assistant helping to clear dishes. You put the dishes on it, it takes away. We're not really going to see robotics so much in the front of the house in food service as much as in the back of the house, where like the pizza example is being used to help cook things or a barista or a drink dispensing. But I also think that without underestimating vending and fresh food vending, what is a vending machine that's doing fresh food? It's basically robotics in a box or a restaurant in a box because there is no person in there even though some of the videos I see online might show that, there is no person in there. It's actually robotics making that burger fresh, you know, making the salad, you know, making the pizza, making the hot dogs, and, or making drinks. So robotics, artificial intelligence, you know, and handheld terminals and mobile technologies. So we talked a little bit about a customer experience. Maybe the other question is customer acceptance is, are we in a period now where people are embracing technology change better than they did five or 10 years ago or, or better than the pandemic, which forced us to rely on technology more? Well, first of all, that's the word acceptance is very interesting. That is a great word and a great question. So if I want to gauge what is going to come, and I talk about this all the time. I go to the Consumer Electronics Show. And the reason why I go take a look at CES is because those technologies, if they're not in their innovation zone, are the ones that are about to appear on the shelves, right? So if I see voice there, or I see smart homes that are waking up, or I see security, or I see wearables like watches there, I know that, that they are being accepted, or glasses, right? And so they are being accepted. So once it gets accepted by the general consumer, we can deploy it in our industry without worrying about whether it's going to be accepted or not. Sometimes I say other industries do it to us and they go, well, why can I go ahead and check myself in, but I can't order my own meal. So it's not so much that we have to worry about acceptance anymore. I think it's more of the acceptance is created for us and then we have to catch up. It's an expectation by the consumer. You have been listening to the podcast series, Experience Voices. To hear more and subscribe, visit AmericanEntrepreneurship.com forward slash podcast, where you will also find a form for listener feedback.